basically the plasma membrane are constituted of phospholipids or glycerolipids because they have the glycerol <laughs> as the basis. So this molecule, the glycerol, with two fatty acids here, a phosphate and a radical, which gives the, the name to the phospholipids or to the glycerolipids, is the basic structure found in the lipids, in the phospholipids of the plasma membrane. So, yeah, as you will see, this kind of structure, it can be simply a structural lipid in the plasma membrane. But sometimes, some enzymes can go there and cleave and cut this structure, allowing the production of bioactive molecules that start to uh, despair to, to trigger different signaling pathways. For example, if I cut this uh, fatty acid and if it is a, a stearic acid or arachidonic acid, it can enter in the metabolite for prostaglandins, leukotrienes, which are bioactive lipids that are involved in different cell signaling cascades and have lots of features in cell biology. Uh, the remaining lipids without this fatty acid, now it's a lysophospholipid, which is also bioactive. So you see, from an inert structure, structure, you can mobilize different signaling uh, molecules that can play different roles in cell signaling. And that is one of the messages I would like to pass to you today. Here, this box shows the three major glycerolipids, phospholipids, found in the plasma membrane. Phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylethanolamine. Uh, the three are the most frequent found in the plasma membranes. There is not a, a, a standard composition of the plasma membrane. We cannot say, oh, the plasma membrane is made 40% by phosphatidylcholine, 30%, but it's different. It changes all the time, varying with the, the, the environment, uh, with the cell, with the tissue, with the organism, okay? So it's not a, a, it's not a, 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 a closed composition. You can vary the composition. And here, we have the phosphatidyl inositol, which is one of the most important phospholipids involved in cell signaling because he is, this molecule is the precursor of phosphoinositides, which will be very, very important for cell signaling procedures. Okay? So these glycerolipids are found in all the, the organisms. Another class, very important class, is the sphingolipids. The sphingolipids do not have glycerolipids as the basic of its structure. The basic is uh, sphingosine, which is in blue in this, in this picture. Everywhere you look, you see the blue part. Of, this is the, the, the backbone, OK? Uh, one of the most important uh, sphingolipids is sphingomyelin which is very known in neurons to make the, the neuron, the myelin bay in the neuron, okay? But sphingomyelin, for years, it was just a structural lipid. And from 20 years, uh, more, a little more than 20 years ago, they start to see that sphingomyelin can be broke and give origin to Ceramide. Ceramide is a sphingolipid that is closely related to apoptosis, to cell death. Okay? So, it's another example in, in the start of this talk that I would give it to you. If you have a, a, a high concentration of ceramide in a plasma membrane or in an organism, in an unicellular, it's uh, indicative that thing is not good. He is the, the, that organism is in the way to die because it is one of the initial steps of apoptosis is to generate 
ceramide, OK? But ceramide also can be degraded by physiological enzymes that we have in our body and return to sphingosine. And this is a, somehow a, a cycle, yes? We, we are always producing these molecules and recycling and putting the membrane and despairing uh, uh, signaling pathway, so it's a very dynamic process, okay? Well, both ceramide and sphingosine, they are able to be phosphorylated. So, if we, you have ceramide, there is a kinase, a lipid kinase, that comes and phosphorylates ceramide. So, it, it starts to be ceramide 1 phosphate. See this kind of uh, procedure uh, we are talking about. If you have ceramide, it's an indicative of apoptosis. If you have ceramide 1 phosphate, it's an indicative of proliferation, of survive. So, a simple, simple lipid kinase can change the fate of the cell to death, to life, with a basic phosphorylation. Can you see? If I put a phosphate here, I turn this molecule, which is involved in cell death, in, uh, in the way to, la to live, to, to proliferate, to differentiate, okay? The same occurs with sphingosine. Sphingosine can be phosphorylated and become sphingosine 1-phosphate, which is also involved in proliferation and cell development. So these two lipid kinases are nowadays much studied in different approaches to uh, cell therapy, for example, because if you can uh, wake up these lipid kinases, we can transform bad lipids into good lipids, and we can bypass the sign of death in different organisms. It is on the on currently be done in different laboratories around the world. Here, we have a, a very good picture from a very good review in the literature about sphingolipids. Uh, I, I, I see if you try to make some kind of, of, of research about cell signaling, I, I assume that if you find any correlation with your topic with bioactive lipids, you will find someone, something, OK? Uh, here we have sphingosine, sphingosine 1-phosphate. Here is the phosphate, ceramide, ceramide 1-phosphate, and the precursor, which is sphingomyelin. So all these molecules are found in the membrane in different times, in different constituents, in different uh, amounts, depending on the necessity and the exposure of that cell to normal or to not normal conditions. 